Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at SeatGeek. Buying tickets is no longer a complicated and confusing thing. SeatGeek made it simple. Mm-hmm. They're, they're our very good friends. They were the first people to get behind any product that Pat McAfee put out. Uh-huh. They were the first to sponsor this show as well. Uh, we love them, and there's a reason. Because they always find you the best seats for your value. If you have 100 bucks to spend, they will find you absolutely the best seat for that $100 because they search all the other ticket buying platforms in order to do so. They're like your broker. They're like your seat agent. Oh, nice. They're not only geeks. They're your friends. Every purchase is fully guaranteed. Shop with complete confidence when you shop with SeatGeek. Make SeatGeek your go-to app right now. Get the best deals on every type of ticket, every type of live event that sells tickets. They have them. Just download the SeatGeek app and enter promo code HEARTLAND today. That's promo code HEARTLAND for $10 off your first SeatGeek purchase. Also, make sure that you go to store.patmcafeeshow.com and check out the new Veterans Day Edition gear. It's awesome. It's yes. awesome. Oh, yeah. I mean, i am tell you what. Phil Maines, that guy has really been pushing some quality product. Get a baby oh, food. Camo oh, yeah. hoodie. I believe like some shirts that are military, military compliant. compliant. Yes, so that they can our, wear under their BDUs. Correct. All of our military yeah. listeners can buy that. Uh, yeah. A lot of our older red, white, and blue merch is going to be included in the sale. Boom. Nice. Oh. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get into it. <laughs> and a three, two, one. Yeah. Kick it on. Crack it cold on. Yeah, the moves are about to go. Heartland Radio. Here we go. Welcome to Heartland Radio 2.0. It's Sunday for us. It's Monday for you. Mm -hmm. It means a couple things. Uh, This episode is being recorded on the Marine Corps birthday. Happy birthday, Todd. Happy birthday, Marine. Happy Happy birthday, birthday, Todd. We're going to play in honor of the Marine Corps birthday. I think I believe it's the 244th Marine Corps birthday. We're going to play a little clip from uh, the Save best Marine Corps ride. movie of all time. <laughs> Ooh, full Metal, full metal jacket. jacket. Today, you people are no longer maggots. <laughs> Today, you are Marines. You're part of the Brotherhood. From now on, until the day you die, wherever you are, every Marine is your brother. Most of you will go to Vietnam. Some of you will not come back. But always remember this. Marines die. That's what we're here for. But the Marine Corps lives forever. And that means you live forever. <laughs> a little motivation. Rest in peace. Yeah. R.I.P. Mm-hmm. Todd actually woke me up with that verbatim on the day I graduated. <laughs> <laughs> you maggot! <laughs> today's actually Monday, so today's actually Veterans Day. Yes. So thank you for your service. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank All you. the men and women, thank you. past and present, to serve this great country. Thank you, Todd. Thank, yeah. Yeah. thank, thank you, Todd. Thanks, Todd. Now you get thanks, to park in parking spots that are for veterans. I, I know. That was nice. I pull up to Lowe's. I'm like, hey. Oh, park in the front front row. Little veteran <laughs> sign there. Veteran parking only. I don't know how they're gonna enforce that. <laughs> you don't have any you don't have anything that you can carry? I don't. Don't you have a I green don't. license plate? Uh, I used That's to. It. Yeah. And oh, then a card, I thought. They changed it to where you have to That's a library. have your DD two fourteen to get it now. Like oh, your your paperwork that. and I'm yeah. like, I don't know where the fuck that is. So we went with Notre Dame. I'm more of an R two D two guy. Oh yeah? Yeah. On your plate? Yeah. You have RTD2 plate? No, actually, Illinois, you have to have both front and back. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. You're doing Iowa, too. Sucks, yeah. Oh, so you can't so have, you don't, have, you don't have, like, the luxury of putting, like, a cool front license. Oh, plate. no, no, no. This is actually a themed plate. It's your real oh, plate. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, it was a Marine Corps themed plate. Yeah, come yeah. on, dude. It wasn't oh, just a, a decorative vanity. <laughs> <laughs> like dare, plate. like a yeah. dare plate, but for the yeah. Marines. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, but now they require all this paperwork and shit. And I's like, hey, yeah. if the Marine Corps is getting money from every time one of these gets purchased, who cares if somebody lies? Yeah, true. Yeah. That's a good point. Oh. Like I pay the sheriff's department to have a sheriff's plate so yeah. I don't get pulled over. Turns out it's 
You still get pulled over. No. Well, yeah, if you don't have your uh, you know registration updated. <laughs> <laughs> not a whole lot of wiggle room there. Uh, fun fact, Tony, I still have not got my car registered. Bought it in June. And Tony Ooh. is Tony's driving across state lines, oh, too. Yeah, yeah. He's really gambling. Life yeah. yeah. on the edge. Man. What's the worst thing? Like, no, yeah. you're good if you go to a different state, though, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. Because they, they can't look up any of your stuff. No, I'm pretty sure it's a national database. But. <laughs> really? Mm. Huh. Yeah. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the 1930s where yeah. you can just disappear forever to Ted the next Bundy. state <laughs> if you were wanted. Um, yeah, and I, just so you know, Todd Town has two less mice. Hey. Oh, oh, nice. Finally went out Good and got you. some you sick fuck. traps. <laughs> they, were, they were invading us, dude. Mouse yeah. turrets everywhere. They were getting in the dog food. Oh, we had oh, a bag God. of peanuts because we laid peanuts out for the squirrels. They tore into that. And some for some reason, these mice would not only like they burrowed into the bag of peanuts, they would carry them onto my workbench and then eat them there. So my workbench is just covered with peanut shells. <laughs> well, they're very polite. They yeah. want to get it all over the floor. Yeah. It's like they're on a the little restaurant. Very interesting decision to yep, have a, a mice problem <laughs> and then you. just scatter peanuts <laughs> across <laughs> the problem. I mean, <laughs> one of us was going to say it. One of us was going to say it. Well, one of the two people that live in my house <laughs> will not like take a bag of something that mice might enjoy and not just leave it on the ground. <laughs> Don't put it on a shelf, anything like that. Uh, yeah. um, but it's like th- people in Africa that have a lion problem, but they just decide to leave fucking full steaks yeah. sitting outside of their tent. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and let's fatten our kids up and let them run loose in the perimeter. I was trying to think of something. You know, they just yeah, got TV. fillets on yeah. deck over there. Funny story, these cameras have been recording. Oh, Bill! Oh, the best Billy Black eight minutes we've ever had. That's all right. You're just going to have to... That yeah. is a Billable devastating Baggins, man. error. I mean, the video wasn't working too fucking bad. Just right. have a black yep. screen for <laughs> yep. the first. Hey, hey. YouTubers, <laughs> welcome back. Hello. You're Go now look. part of the show. Just so you know, the first 15 minutes of the show did not record. <laughs> so you're just stepping in midstream. Go man. listen to the podcast for eight, nine it's, minutes, it's, whatever. Dude, we're just going to put up a logo or something. The video will start Ooh. in five minutes. Static Smart. image. Yeah, that's nice. Hey, there you go. That's that's baby, Bill. Billy Black. Bill. Hey, Bill. Good job, Billy Bill. Black hat. Fucking Billy Backdoor. <laughs> Backdoor Bill. <laughs> um, yeah, so we, I go to I go to Lowe's finally. To, I'm like, ah, it's time to get traps. I had to go there anyway. I don't know if you could do this at your house or not, no. but you should. <laughs> is get uh, the insulated hose bib covers. I do not. Oh, oh, the pump does that. Because if you don't. Pump also has mice. One time, my, <laughs> <laughs> one time mine froze. And when, when you're outside faucet freezes, it doesn't just freeze the part you see. It freezes at the part that's like four foot inside your house. Oh, yeah. in the cro- so it's like a major ordeal to replace one of those. Just a little tip for you listening. <laughs> Good to know. So I go to get those, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to get the mouse traps. So they have sophisticated mouse traps now. They got the ones that just, they're sticky. They oh, yeah. traps them, and I guess they absorb poison in their body, too, and they just die on it. Yeah, <laughs> nice, mean, nice death. All kinds of things. I'm like, all right. That's probably painful because it probably just sneaks up on them. You know what I mean? It's a slow death. I mean, it's slow, a painless death. So I'm going to get that, whatever. But they're real expensive. And my girlfriend, Marnie, is the cheapest person I've ever met. On the <laughs> She's like, no, you just get the one. These are $1.30 a piece. The old wooden the snappers. Snapper, whatever. The snappers. Oh, the we just break their back and they let them <laughs> yeah. play there for fucking three hours until Would they die. wheeling for <laughs> hours on end. Would you buy, so like if there was like a double agent moss? And then they kill the other mice. Moss, like in the river? Moss? <laughs> no, like the mosses. I don't know what you're mouses, saying. Mouses, Mo- mosses. <laughs> oh. So if they were like double agent mouses, <laughs> yeah. mice. and they go in there, and they take out the other ones. So you're saying that a pet store can train mice yes. to kill other mice. And yeah. so you go to the pet store, you so buy- So like the Marines, the Marines of mice. You buy the Marine mi- mouse to kill the, the, the peasant mouse. Yeah. Hey, if the mice, mice would be like- Yeah, it's called a cat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, not pup cat. Yeah, pup cat's soft. Oh, you shut up. <laughs> Your, your cat's scared of mice. No, he had a tough life growing up, okay, and now he's yeah. relaxing. Okay? Yeah. He's, he's evolved into a house cat. He's basically in witness protection. If, if, <laughs> if mice would be like pets, I wouldn't mind him being in there. Like if they would just come out like the, like the mouse in, um, in uh, Stuart Green, Little? Green Mile. Oh, yeah. That one too. Yeah, I, I would like them. All, they all work. They're, yeah. all, they're, all, they're cute. Mr. They're, Bojangles. They're very cute. Oh, Mr. Bojangles. But uh, that was a rat, these, old, these old <laughs> cheap, a rat. These old cheap <laughs> traps, the old wooden ones, suck like they're very yeah. primitive and hard to set so they i put use peanut butter 
So I went out in the garage to check them. The first two I checked. Oh, so you did get the old ones? Yeah. I have to. She was just so offended if I spent over $2 on a mousetrap. So I get in there. The first two I check in the garage, lit clean of peanut butter and not set. I'm like, oh, these suck. The third one, though, has a mouse in it. Boom, dead. So Zito mouse. I go into the, <laughs> I go into, I go in the laundry room. I set one in the corner there, and boom, another mouse. Okay. I'm like, all right, we're two for four. This is all right. So I take the two that they lick clean of peanut butter. I'm going to reset them and put them in the spots where I got the mice last time. Yeah, yeah. So I'm putting it on there, and um, the thing it won't catch. There's a little arm that catches under the thing, the little plate that holds the peanut butter right, and it, you lift that up, and it just holds that little hook on the arm. And then when they come eat it, it lifts up and sets a trap. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to do that over and over. Like a fucking half hour this morning trying to do this, and it won't go. <laughs> and then finally, I'm like trying to do it with two hands, wedging through, whack, right on my fucking oh, thumb. Oh, shit. Right on my thumb. Bailey, can you imagine how mad, like you know your dad, how I, we've seen him do stuff around oh. here that takes half hour. <laughs> how mad he was at this point even Jeez. before he got... So mad. So there's either the, two things that happened. He either screamed and everyone in the neighborhood heard it, or he just started like brooding and he was just walking around like, no, it, no, no, it, no, no, it's, it's all fine. It's all fine. It was no, the, it. the loudest the anyone fist. has ever yelled fuck in the history of the word. I was so fucking loud. I was even impressed afterward. I was like, man, that was good volume. <laughs> but it hurt so bad. I thought it might. I thought for a second, I was like, I broke my fucking thumb in this mousetrap. It's what I get for not how is that? How you catch know? and release. Is it purple? What's going on? Uh, it will be for sure. Yeah, it has a line I can see. Wait, pe- people catch and release? Yeah, they have the ones that just like trap them in Respect there. Respect the mouse? But they didn't have any of those of those. They were all death. <laughs> all well, those related traps. Those also have to be like five bucks a piece if you're catching and releasing. Oh, catch mice is probably yeah. very Come expensive. On. Oh, you know what you should do? You get a snake, become a snake guy. Yeah, you could. Ooh, no, probably then not feed them to the snake. That's not going to happen. Yeah. And like not a cage snake, you need to let it the snake roam around. Would yeah. you guys have a snake? Fuck Never. No, no oh but God, you should. God, no. no. I, I also don't have fucking snakes. Todd Town needs a snake. I think snakes are like, they're tied to the devil. They are. Like you're welcoming For the sure. devil into your house. You have to be True. fluent in possible tongue, too, to have a snake. Mm-hmm. An apostle tongue? Yeah. <laughs> That's a What's Harry, the... Harry Potter reference. Ah. <laughs> yeah, apostle <laughs> <a> tongue. <laughs> <laughs> How is it? What that? Parcel? No, that's not <laughs> is it really that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no way. Yeah. Yeah. You just linked all the disciples <laughs> to Jesus to to communicating with snakes. I guess only one of them was a snake. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, yeah. 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 he was a snake. Oh, that's snake. So- you do that. There's a good chance you're going to get fired. <laughs> <laughs> But if you want to replace that person, <laughs> you can know that hiring the right person takes time. <laughs> time that you don't often have. Urgency can be your enemy when it comes to finding candidates that are truly meant for your business. That's why LinkedIn is the best place to post oh, for your yeah. job. Mm-hmm. LinkedIn Jobs screens candidates with the hard and soft skills you're looking for so you can hire the right person fast. Things like collaboration, creativity, adaptability, LinkedIn looks beyond the work skills and puts your job pro- post in front of qualified candidates who match your business requirements perfectly. You don't want to hire some scumbag who's nope. not going to fit into your culture. <laughs> uh-huh. No. That's how LinkedIn makes sure your job post is seen by the people you want to hire, people with the skills, qualifications, and other interests that will help your business grow. It's no wonder a person is hired every eight seconds with LinkedIn. <laughs> wow. Whoa. And why companies rated LinkedIn Jobs the number one hiring platform for delivering Quality hires. Oh, that's awesome. Find the right person today for your business with LinkedIn Jobs. You can pay what you want and you get the first $50 off. Just visit linkedin.com slash heartland. Again, that's linkedin.com slash heartland to get $50 off your first job post. Terms and conditions apply. So how did everybody else's weekend go? <laughs> what did you do, Diggs? You, you took a little trip down to the Bourbon Trail. I right? did. I went to the Bourbon Trail. Uh, Louisville? Went to, the, went to the Maker's Mark. Uh, Can I say one thing? The one video that someone put up, there was a lady just going like blind, like she wasn't even like looking while she was dipping the. Dude, they dip. Yeah, they hand dip every single Maker's Mark bottle that you ever seen. She doesn't look at it though. They're like looking around. They they do like muscle memory. They do like thousands a day. I'm pretty sure they're just at this point. I guess it's muscle memory. It's not rocket science, dude. You're dipping a bottle (laughs) in some wax. I know, but it's just like, but the way the the wax falls. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they're very good at it. They're very good at it because I dipped my own bottle. Obviously, had to. Yeah, nice. Fucking, I went all the way in. 
like six inches deep. <laughs> the whole bottle. The yeah, whole bottle's basically <laughs> nice. fucking wax covered. I was getting my money's worth. But it's pretty cool. Like, you go down there and you learn how it's made and stuff like that. It's very, very cool. I didn't realize that they, each barrel sits for like seven years. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, dude. Oh, fucking yeah. aged big time. And then it's clear. It has to. It's Gotta clear. age it. The barrel is what makes gives its color. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, little yeah. fun facts. Cherry Soaks wood. in from the no what, kid. Yeah, yeah. oak. Yeah, yeah. Oak barrel. Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. I don't know if it was oak or not. I'm just, yeah. I wasn't paying attention extremely because I was drinking and stuff like that, but whatever. The problem with the bourbon trail is everywhere you go to these places, you can only drink straight bourbon. Correct. I feel like if they had like somewhat of a bar and you could buy maybe like, I don't know, an old fashioned at everyone or something like that. Whiskey ginger. Maybe. It would have been a little, yeah, so, just anything. Something, so you yeah. can't ever do a day trip to one of these places. Oh, no. I mean, we did. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, like, you, you're you not driving back after you're oh, done doing it. No, 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 no. We took a bus. You're... Yeah, we'd take a bus. Like, Maker's Mark is out in the middle of fucking nowhere. Should yeah. be bootleggers. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely <laughs> nowhere. So it's like an, it was like an hour and 15 minutes away from Louisville. So you did Maker's Mark, and then we did like three or four other ones. It was cool. I mean, I, it was cool. It was something. I, I hammered. I mean, obviously, it's just risky all day long. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong, but I think like the flavor you're looking for in bourbon is like a smoky flavor. So I think they char the inside of those barrels. They do. So it's like the burnt and each part of the barrel. And each uh, each bourbon place, each distillery, whatever, chars their their barrels at different rates and stuff like that to give it different tastes and stuff like that. Blah 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 blah. All that stuff. So no, obviously, no bourbon's the same. But it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. I, I, I want to go there. I, I've been to Louisville a million times and never gone there. Really? Yeah. I don't know why. I went to the Bat Museum one time. Ty, you Louisville Slugger Museum. Sweet. No, I haven't. <laughs> I would, I mean, I would yeah, like to do you that and Nick quite would a love bit. It. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It's pretty fucking cool. I, I mean, love And I love Makers. So do I. Very oh, good. Fuck. It's probably my go-to. See, I'd never, I'd never think of going to do that, though, because like, I I mean, just on a surface level, it's like, well, I don't I don't give a shit how this is made. Correct. You know, it tastes <laughs> yeah. good, but right. actually yeah. going there, I think it, it would uh, make a little bit of a difference. And then they explain, like, the Makers 46 or whatever, mm-hmm. how that's done, and, like, how all the different ones are made and stuff like that. 46, they actually tried, like, 200 some different types of woods, wow. and they decided, like, for the 46th wood was the best, so that's why it's mm. Makers 46. Huh. Ah, like that. That's awesome. Was that. Mr. Maker there? Uh, like the don't, I didn't see him. John Maker. I didn't, Johnny Maker, I didn't see. <laughs> Mark Maker. <laughs> <laughs> is it Maker or is he Mark? Ooh, I think he's Which Mark part Maker. Of his name did he use? Oh, I believe that's actually the mark of the maker of the bourbon is what that is. Uh, hmm. gotcha. Does it cost to get in? Is there an entry fee? There is you? a tour fee. It's, it wasn't much. Maybe like 20 bucks or something. No, yeah. That's not bad. No, it wasn't. And then you get the tasting. Yeah, It's not bad. Worth gig. it. Yeah, yeah, not a bad little gig at all. For sure. But all that. these, like, so, like, the four or five tastings, it was just straight whiskey all day long. Maybe. Have any of you guys been to the uh, the Budweiser Brewery in uh-uh. St. Louis? No, no, never. That's pretty fucking cool. Same deal. It's just so big. Yeah. It's, that, you, it's sweet. Can you actually see the Clydesdales there? Oh, yeah. Uh, <gasps> I only went once, and I was, like, eight. So uh, it actually kind of sucked. Couldn't drink. They did, <laughs> they did have delicious Pepsi and pretzels, though. I do remember okay. that. Uh, but no, I, I don't think eh, they might have been there. I don't remember. That would be cool to go to the stable mm-hmm. where those things are. There, have you ever been next to a Clydesdale? Mm-hmm. I assume they're big. Yeah, Sixteen oh hands, God. at least. They if I was back in the night, days of nights or whatever, I would ride a Clydesdale only. You would crush all the other horses. That's like you're you're basically the Rock in every movie that he, if every Fast and <laughs> yes. Furious movie. Yeah. They're all like running on Mustangs and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and you have the tank, the yeah. Clydesdale. Yep, that's what I would want. That always you pisses me off that The Rock does that. Easy. I watched Hobbs and Shaw this weekend. That really man good. has earned everything he has <laughs> ever right, done. Uh, what do you think about it? I mean, it is what it is. It is know? exactly what it's it is. It's a fucking popcorn movie. <laughs> you know, it, it's so ridiculous. There's I was some good laughing. lines. There's some, There's good, some li- good lines. I was laughing so hard during it. I mean, it's just ridiculous. It's so <laughs> fucking over the top. <laughs> he really does. You know, the the Rock brings down an, like an Apache helicopter <laughs> yeah, that was one with a hook with no guns, with no tree. guns at all. No, yeah, no guns on the island. Somehow. We got to use hammers. <laughs> yep. Mama got rid of the guns. So I mean, it's just it's so obnoxious. It's so absurd. But it's. It's on brand. It's Hobbs and Shaw, baby. It's a good time, Shaw, yeah. I mean, it's a good time baby. And they, they set you up at the end for the next one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. They're going to make 10 more of those. The only <laughs> thing I remember about that movie is like the 10 minute handshake scene with everyone on the island. Yeah. It was oh, awesome. Man. That was awesome, dude. Roman Joe Reigns. and Noy just fucking <laughs> spears left and right. <laughs> Roman Reigns also had no line. No line. Not one <laughs> line. Just stay, stand there for 30 minutes and look big. He had a nice uh, fucking fist pound with the rock, oh, though, yeah. before yeah, he, yeah. he goes off to, to chase the antidote or whatever. Whatever. Fucking his Usos. Yeah. It, I mean, 
<laughs> what a fucking joke. <laughs> but, it's, but it's it's you know if if you got if you got two and a half hours to kill, not really doing anything, yeah. well yeah. worth the investment. Oh, yeah. All right. By the time I'll they get to the out. island, it's like two hours into the movie. And you're like, this is still happening. Yeah, Todd, this you need it. Still yeah. a movie. It's right up your alley. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm all for easy to consume movies. Oh yeah. Oh, this yeah. is I'm the all king. About. Like Spendables, I watch I watch thirty of them if they keep making. Mm-hmm. The A team uh, comes on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, love it. What? Anybody else do anything cool? Zito met the vice president. Oh, yeah. yeah. Of what? Nick could uh, tell a story, but we basically were the Clean Anderson concert yesterday. And so we went downtown to go eat, okay? And <laughs> Giordano's. Uh, Giordano's. 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 Yep. No pizza. They tricked me. What do you what? mean, no pizza? Well, they told we, me that they ordered pizza. We had to tell Zito a lie to get Zito to come there. So <laughs> yeah. we told him there was pizza, and there was no pizza when he Good got there. Good move. Good uh, move. So he shows up, and we were like, all right, yeah. what, what's going on? We're walking around, and we see Clayton Anderson is playing a show to support like the veterans for oh, Veterans nice. Day nice. in the circle. Yeah. So Good we guy. stopped by, hung out for a little bit. And after the show, a bunch of people were walking into the Columbia Club, which is a very swanky club downtown. By the way, I always thought it was a hotel the whole time. Yeah. Well, you're a moron. So (laughs) Zito and I just kind of finessed our way into the group uh, that was being cattle called. Basically, they were herding people like cattle through these little gates. Were you guys looking swanky? No. Zito had a For the Brand shirt on, T-shirt on. (laughs) And we get get, uh, shuffled in, and we we walk up, and there's some Secret Service guys, and you had to put your hands out, and they give you the full body scan with the wand, and they let you in. Apparently, it was a a fundraiser, like a $10,000 head (laughs) fundraiser for Mike Pence in this club. Mr. Pence. Well, yeah, I figured you guys are first name basis by now. Well, basically. <laughs> so we go in there, we're like, we do not belong in here. And Zito's Obviously. walking around, like, oh, what's this? Oh, what is this over here? This is <laughs> fucking completely. They, they had George Washington's original piano from uh, the White House in there. How did they get it here? I don't know. Probably uh, on a train. Operation Dumbo Drop, same same situation. <laughs> Maybe yeah. he wouldn't need to have a fundraiser if he stopped spending money stupidly <laughs> like that. Oh, let's spend a hundred grand. Did you play the piano? piano? No, it was like no. He off. raided the hors d'oeuvres table. Oh, the oh. Swedish meatballs. Oh, so good. good. Santa Swedish Fe. meatballs. Wait, wait, wait. They had Swedish meatballs yeah. at it the American. vice president of the USA's fundraiser. Mm. Wait, they should have been American meatballs. Yeah. I don't know the difference, but a big difference. But uh, the, the uh, Santa Fe egg rolls were amazing. That I sense. they basically yelled at me for eating too many. They're like, "Sir, save some for the rest of everyone else." <laughs> 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 and that would have been the. You're talking you back off. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> You're Cuban Tommy boy. Yeah, basically, yeah. yeah I'll give you that. Just Wait, lost- wait, pay, pay ten thousand dollars. Get in here. <laughs> <laughs> just lost my vote. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was funny because like everyone was like just literally staring at us. Like obviously we were wearing. Jeans, well, we had no like, business being in there. We were in <laughs> jeans and t-shirts. Were they all in suits? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> was Clayton with you? How did you? You just stumbled nope. in, literally just stumbled in from the concert. We just kind of like blended into the crowd and just kind of walked yeah, right in. It's one of those things <laughs> where like Zito could get into, into a anywhere, crowd. Dude. <laughs> they were like, uh, "Are you with that group?" And then we said yes, <laughs> and then they started doing like, like looking there, like check, like their. Uh-huh. Check marks and stuff, yeah. and they just let us in. Well, the so best part was it was a cash bar, but to uh, <laughs> they worked the tab system where you just had to know a number. Yeah, so Thanks. it was like a five digit number. So Thanks, we, we heard this guy's five digit number, oh, oh, perfect. and oh. we, we put a couple on his tab. I mean, I'm just gonna throw this out there, but I don't think they're doing a very good job of protecting the vice president. It's <laughs> oh, so no. easy to get into this event, yeah. an assassin could have slipped right in. Are you with this group? Yes. He goes upstairs, <laughs> hides the closet, puts together his rifle. I'm done. It's funny because you you clearly watched uh, what's called this week because it was on TV. Um, National Treasure Shooter. Nope. The 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 assassin video. Oh, game Hitman. Slash, yeah. Yeah. Hitman. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We've seen Hitman commercials. Timothy oh. Oliphant. <laughs> <laughs> That's honestly one of the greatest movies of all time, though. It's it's a really good movie. Yeah. The and second then, one sucked. But. So basically, we tried going so upstairs to uh, <laughs> we tried going upstairs, and then we basically got kicked out. Yeah, security got a little tighter the further you tried to yeah. go into the event. So yeah. the Cretans were down low, and then the <laughs> yeah, actual like, yeah, well, yeah, it, we were like looking around, and you could see guards up above uh, on this little like balcony, basically. And anytime they looked at Zito, guards, they got, <laughs> their their hand just moved closer yeah. to their hip. Make your move. <laughs> That's what, I was actually surprised that they let Zito's kind in there. Oh, 100%. Yeah, I did not belong. Were you once. getting looks? Oh, every, every single person was in there just like, 
Is that a Cuban? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad Mike invited the token Cuban to the party. Yeah, I had to pretend like my last name didn't end in a vowel. It was yeah, a very, yeah. a very uh, waspy event. But end of the day, great party, good fundraiser. We uh-huh. saved a lot of money up. Good hors d'oeuvres. Um, yeah, great meatballs. Uh, the pita chips wasn't a fan of, but uh, good time. I guess, I guess those black SUVs that they use in the motorcade yeah. for the president, yeah. vice president, whatever, are like really hard to drive. Because they're so fucking heavy. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Because they're armored out to the hilt. Like all my Secret Service friends said, they're like, it's like trying to drive like a fight, you know, uh, one of those big deuce and a half military vehicles. Yeah. And then you're in this deuce nice, like, Classic. decked out SUV. Well, I actually forget. You're part of Secret Service. Would you have let me in? Uh, no. I would have shot you on the side. <laughs> I'm so put wait, a bullet you in get, your melon. Did you get escorted out? or No, it was basically, sir, uh, please see your way out. <laughs> oh, it, so. it was more of a suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> a kind suggestion. Drop the meatballs and move <laughs> to the door. This, I, event, this event's going to go down in Secret Service training as the uh, Cuban appetizer. <laughs> 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 but uh, it was just to a point where I felt like I was in Get Out. And I was going to get like brainwashed. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty white in there? Yeah. Was it? it was yeah. swanky. <laughs> very, very nice. Like Glassy just rich mahogany walls oh, everywhere, paintings, like just high end. Yeah. That club's been here forever. I've too. always wanted to go in there. Yeah. Oh, it's a you fun were with time. us. You could have smuggled right in. You had just left. You left like 10 minutes before we I did, did that. I did, yeah. That, well, we won't get into it. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> had, some had some duty to play. Had a lot of duty to play. <laughs> That may be a drill, but it sounds just like my Quip toothbrush. Oh! 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 <laughs> what actually makes a better toothbrush? Industrial strength and power, claims of miraculous trendy ingredients, multiple modes. If you ask your dentist, they'll tell you it's less about the brush and more about how you use it. That's why Quip was created by Quip, dentists Quip, Quip, and Quip, product designers Quip. to focus on what actually matters for your oral health. Oral. Healthier oral. habits. Quip's sensitive Quip. vibrations with a built-in timer guide gentle brushing for the dentist recommended two minutes with 30-second pauses, recommended. ensuring an even clean. Quip. 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 Quip automatically delivers quip, brush quip, heads quip. to you every three months for clean new bristles right on schedule. Quip. 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 The sleek, quip, intuitive quip. design is simple to use and comes with a travel cap that doubles as a mirror mount. It's a mirror. mirror. Quip. Quip. <laughs> quip. 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 These beautiful quip, features make quip, brushing quip. something you actually want to do twice every day. Good habits matter to, a, to live a healthier life, so help Form fresh oral health habits with Quip. It's fresh. Quip. 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 Starts at just $25 and you'll get your first free fill free at Git. It's free. Quip. Quip. Dot com slash Heartland. This is a simple way to support our show and start brushing better. But you have to go to Git. Q-U-I-P. Quip. Dot com, com slash, quit, heartland slash heartland to get your first refill free. Go free. right now to get quit, 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 dot com quit, slash heartland. Quit, 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 I, I saw later though, there was a picture. Um, it was fucking packed in the circle. There were a shitload of people there, not so much when we were so there. So we met some uh, service members down there oh, who yeah. said they, the I don't know if it was the city or what, spent like millions of dollars. 30 mil, I believe you to said. To put this event on. And they put like laser lights all over the monument and they are doing it up wow. for Veterans Day. That's, That's crazy. Did you see the lighting at huh? all on social media? I saw the American flag mm-hmm. on one of the buildings. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So... Tomorrow, you should drone it, dude. Today, we should ah. try to slip down there and catch some of the ceremony. Yeah, is it like an afternoon ceremony or? I don't know. They I blocked off all the street and saw the signs. Out I know it was for the marathon. They do that every fucking weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick of it. Seriously, my apartment is in a position where I can't get. You can't get anywhere. You uh. can't get anywhere you need to go because all the streets are closed down. And then you go and look. And there's no one running the fucking marathon. <laughs> there's like two old sons of bitches walking and then some lady like power walking and they have every street downtown closed off. It's ridiculous. And there's a new marathon every single weekend. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dude, you know when um, we all went out and there was that bike race going on mm-hmm. downtown 
And then we ended up eating at a little place like right off the um, where the race was roped off. That was the most entertaining thing I've ever seen. There were so many wipeouts like right in front of us. Like when we were walking to get to that one pub, we like four wipeouts happened right next to us. This dude's just flying everywhere, <laughs> coming up all bloody, and they just get back back on there, or they grab their bike and jump over the thing, and they're done. It was awesome. When's the last time anyone here has fallen besides Nick? <laughs> hmm. It's been a while. It's been yeah. a very long time, and like I feel like once you fall. As an older person, you automatically break something every single time. Yeah, I, I know. thought I can't get I mean, back yeah. up. I try not to do anything that where there's a risk of falling. Yeah, you also have to attempt things yeah. to fall. <laughs> oh, well, come yeah, on. I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> but like that's that's just no, we're you're just right. living smart. I know. I used to. I mean, I used to fall. Yeah, you fly every off single your day. Bike, you tumble. Oh yeah, nothing matter. Your body was just flexible pump. and bendy and yeah. resilient. I, I will say this: we were at a hotel uh, a couple weeks ago. I think it was the Stanford one, and I was taking a shower. The what one? The one in Stanford. Okay. And it got to a point where I, w- I got in, and it was like the high step ones, and I fell out of the shower, <laughs> 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 and I athletically caught myself. Oh, did you? So yeah, like it, w- it was lucky that the bars that hold uh, the curtain was like bolted in, so I I, I like because <laughs> the whole thing would have fallen uh, apart. See you fucking, then, see you know, see you fucking laying on the floor, wrapped in a curtain. Fucking Tommy boy destroys <laughs> the shower. And then I just like, luckily it was such a fucking high, Tommy's like eat. the tub was so high that my knee perfectly folded. Like, it. <laughs> just uh, sat like, down. It a, so it was a safe fall though, because if it was like low, I would like fuck myself up. But like my knee just like perfectly like folded around it, that I literally was just I kind of like fell into it like a hammock. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I just started laughing. I was like, "People die of this." <laughs> <laughs> what are you just laying there naked? Yeah. Can't move. <laughs> Housekeeping. <laughs> <laughs> I fell and I can't get up. <laughs> I'm stuck in the bathtub. I think my hip is out. <laughs> I'm getting hungry. <laughs> that, honestly, that is the worst way to die. If you're just like awkwardly naked oh, and like <laughs> dying <laughs> naked would be the worst. Shriveled up dick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the bathtub and it's just like freezing cold water because the hot water ran out yeah. hours ago. Uh, <laughs> Body's purple and blue. Oh, I kind of want to get tattooed. It's like it just says like it's bigger usually. Like, it's yeah. <laughs> I was in. I was in the water. <laughs> Because they're going to take, you know, crime scene photos, yeah. like uh-huh. death photos. <laughs> Use your tiny shrimp. And they're all dick. laughing at each other yeah. at the evidence corner. Uh, I bet you death dick is not a good dick. No. no. If you get rigor mortem no. in your dick, though. Rigor mortem? Rigor who? Rigor mortem. Rigor mortis? Uh, I, I was about to, I was going to see if he yeah. could get it eventually. Mortis? Mortis. Huh. Rigor mortis. That's when it gets really hard. Yeah, That's your, your body, body gets hard. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure if your dick does. It too. gets hard for a period of time, and then you get lucid again. You get oh. soft again. Flaccid. Yeah. Oh, I'd rather be rigor mortis. <laughs> <laughs> Come get this rigor mortis dick. <laughs> <laughs> that death dick. <laughs> uh, anybody else say anything cool? No? <laughs> I watched the uh, Logan Paul KSI fight. Did anyone else watch that? Yeah, I missed it. Uh, yeah. Missed it. I have a hard enough time it. watching people that know how to box box. <laughs> That's, I'm struggling to find that as entertainment anymore. I can't imagine watching these two guys. It just, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess it was kind of entertaining, but you can't do anything in a six round fight, especially yeah. guys like that where it takes them like they don't know what they're doing really uh-huh. for the first two rounds. Like if it would have been 12, it would have made sense. But I, I will say though, that KSI guy for throwing haymakers for six rounds straight and not getting tired. Good endurance. Was no, one no, of the no, no, no. He was tired. <laughs> he was tired. Both of them like midway through the first round, like mouths were just agape, breathing out of their mouths big time. Yeah. Like, but they were, he was just throwing like, it wasn't Overhead. even like normal punches. Yeah. It was just like, Windmills. Slapping windmill, <laughs> yeah. like Logan Paul actually looked like pretty polished, but he yeah. just he just didn't do anything. He like, threw one right hand that knocked the guy down, and then never threw well, it again. And he actually uh, he, he had a nice little. He got the guy in like a Muay Thai clinch that. behind and fucking <laughs> uppercutted him right in the mouth and oh, dropped really? him. Lost two points. That yeah, lost it. Lost major him the fight. Legal move. But it just I, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure it did the numbers that they wanted it to do, but it just. You're right. It's hard enough watching two guys. Like, so before that fight, they had uh, some guy who they're like, they're saying is like the next Floyd Mayweather, like some really young, like lightweight. Mm-hmm. It's just so fucking boring. So yeah. boring. Yeah. And Especially it, if you box like Floyd Mayweather. It's a boring, yeah. it's a boring fucking Yeah, but fight. The, Floyd Mayweather, at least like when he lands, like he's, yeah, yeah. he's 
he's landing big time, you know, like he's super defensive. Yeah. But if they would have fought like MMA, I think it would have been. Uh, yeah, way more entertaining. Because right? you could you could just tell very early, like, all right, the chances one of these guys are getting knocked out is slim to none. I know, because like in boxing, the reason why it sucks to watch amateurs box is because the with the gloves and everything, it's all about spacing, right? Like the pros know when to slide back and the perfect distance to deliver the punch from and all that. I mean, that's why when we watch like the rough and rowdies with Barstool, why they're so bad is they're so close to each other, they got nothing on their punches. Mm-hmm. And they just they tire and out. It's the same thing. Back. Like they'll swing, and then they, like they tied up like yeah. every fifteen yeah. seconds. And it was just, I mean, I don't know. You know, it started at eleven p.m., so I wasn't really doing anything uh-huh. else. It was pretty entertaining, but it's just, <laughs> yeah, it's tough. I my hand on Saturday morning was a balloon uh, because I accidentally ran into one of those. Uh, boxing machines. Oh, okay. <clears throat> and I had a twenty on me. You can't not swing at it. I swung it at twenty it's times. In there, and my it. hand on Saturday morning was a balloon. Like <laughs> Would you I won what was the high score. Hey, I won that it was like seven eighty five or something like that. Uh, boy tone. No, no, I, yeah, I mean I was much better back in the day, but it was a respectable number. It was the highest of the group, so I felt pretty fun. There you go. Good. Nice. I remember one time I swung at one of those hard as I could. And I missed it. Just oh. enough that it, oh. I barely oh. grazed it. It went, went I mean, it felt like somebody ran a hot iron up my back. And I had a burn mark from my knuckle up to my wrist. And I looked like a complete idiot. I <laughs> like through the fall punch. over. No, it was the worst. Because, you know, usually so many beers in by the time you decide you're going to yeah, do yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, that, no one's ever hit one of those sober, no, I think. No, 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 no. I uh, went out to Broad Ripple, ran into a couple listeners. Uh, also ran into someone who was selling edibles. Ooh. And uh, really? in a Do drunken blackout, I definitely bought those and ate those on Saturday. <laughs> and I was asleep for five hours. <laughs> That'll do it. it wasn't more. At the bar? No, no, no. no. Like Saturday, the, the day oh. after. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can't see it. I mean... What were were they gummies? The guy just put a fucking horse Rice tranquilizer yeah, in like I, a cookie yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not trusting <laughs> someone else's fucking edibles. It was like it was Rice Krispie treats, and it had like oh, little. Yeah, it looked like Ooh. little red fun fetti. I can't oh, believe you're red. alive. It probably had fentanyl in it. I probably got about twelve hours exactly. to live. But. Yeah, always a great idea to buy drugs from somebody you don't know in a bar. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it was it was a good time, especially yeah. homemade ones. Good yeah. Yeah. Right package. <laughs> but uh, I was lucky enough to run into uh, listener Max Payne. Oh, Ooh. and something Ooh, Dr. Cop. Payne. I can't remember his first name, but it was Cop. Oh, his last really? name was Cop. Cop. C O P P. They gave you two fake names. Yep, two fake Cooper names. Cooper Cop. Immediately, when I said, they go, "I recognize your voice," and I go, "You guys have fake names." <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Max Payne. Yeah. Max Payne. That's a movie. Great, that's a movie. Hey, you're gonna make yeah. great, no, it's a great video, video, video game. Yeah, video character. game. Yeah. I played that video game oh. for two years straight. Yeah. It's honest. <laughs> I was so it's addicted. One to of the Max greatest Payne. games ever made. It was incredible. Yeah. Uh, when it first came out, I was just so addicted. Yeah, I still remember the codes, I think. Oh, dude. Up down left, best. right, well, 1 L2. GTA. 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 They used to have the bullet time where you could dive in slow motion with like uh-huh. a shotgun, and then uh, you had painkillers, yeah, was the fuck oh, yeah. to get your health better. It was awesome. Just eating Vicodins or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> that movie was a letdown, right? Yeah, it fucking like, sucked. If I remember correctly. Marky Mark. Most yeah. of the video game uh, movies are. Not Hitman. You Hitman was good. <laughs> Hitman was very good. And I think I did trash. That movie stunk. <laughs> oh, shut oh, up. Come on. Put Timothy Alfin on the map. Yeah. Take what are you talking about? Did it? Yeah. Yeah. He wasn't on the map before? He got a TV gig I don't think that. so. Mm-hmm. Poor guy has great hair. He had to go bald in that fucking... I know. He has like the best guy. hair in, in Hollywood. He was a good looking bald guy, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought about getting the barcode tattoo a couple times. Oh, he's got an awesome tattoo. In the second one, it was the guy from Homeland, right? The CIA Who, Brody? assassin guy. No. Uh, the second one was... Uh, Quinn? Yeah, Quinn. Really? I think he was in the second one. I didn't see the second one. Yeah. Well, the first one too. sucked ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hitman, Hitman 2007. Oh, yeah. 6.3 Tell me stars. Nice. Was, to, was That's, to be all fun. Give me the fan favorite, though. Uh, the Oh, yeah, it was Quinn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. I thought so. The more you know. I, I, anything that Timothy Oliphant's in, I'm uh, down. Oh, yeah. He, he has such a unique way of speaking and like moving, mm-hmm. he has that swagger to him or whatever. I don't know what it is. I, he can, he's always the coolest guy in the movie. Have you seen Justified? Yes. Oh, I was gonna yeah. say My that. God. That is a great TV show. I mean, he, he what network's that on? FX. Okay. So FX does roll. good yeah. TV shows. They got movies. <laughs> I know what you're thinking it's not on USA. <laughs> no, not hey. a chance. 
All I know is I found out on this weekend that a lot of people love the USA Network. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. I know. Yeah, like, my mom especially. I think yeah, and she none she of really the shows it. that you liked. <laughs> uh, <that's not> <laughs> we saw your poll. <laughs> we all saw the results. That's not true. White collar fucking dominated. Not Bernard Monk. Apparently not. But that guy, I hate that actor, whoever the fuck is. Tony, Tony Shalhoub. Shalhoub. Oh, he's a schloop. Yeah, he's a schmuck. Oh, he was great on. in um, Men in Black. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Small Got his head, head blown off. Remember <laughs> in a grew bank? Oh, yeah. I remember him. Not very many people could have pulled that off. He owned that cool store. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, we got an interview coming up. You guys can hang for it if you want. Couple, Should. Paranormal investigator and a psychic medium. Everybody was out of town, so me and Connor and Bailey held it down. Uh-huh. Uh, I think it's, I, I had a lot of fun. I could have talked to that medium lady forever. Yeah, I'm bummed it's I missed this. So many questions. Like, I would like to have her back yeah. just to talk with, with her. Yeah. Get some stories. He, I mean, he's cool, too. He has, like, one of the coolest jobs in the world and a very nice and cool guy. But talking to the dead, they're another on, level. They're on, <laughs> they're on, they're on TV. Yeah, the Travel mm-hmm. Channel. She uh, she travels around and does a live show too. So if she's ever around Indianapolis, we should try to. Yeah, sure yeah, her in. that's true. Her live show is her probably. name Madam something. No. Cindy, Cindy Kaza. Oh, so not Madam something. Nope. Cindy. Her stage name. Maybe. And we're gonna trust her, even though her name's not Madam Cindy. I think yeah. she's breaking. Madam Kaza. She's a modern. Oh, Madam Kaza would have been <laughs> great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll talk to her next time. Hey, you should what? change your name. <laughs> How about Madam Cindy? <laughs> <laughs> changes everything. Yeah, she does these live shows where she'll like do readings and stuff in it, and it looks it looks pretty cool. And the truth shall set you free. The truth will set you free. And here's the truth: when it comes to the holidays, what do most people think of? Food, family, quality time, mm. presents, mm-hmm. boxes. We all love a good subscription box, right? Oh, oh, oh yeah. From food boxes to wellness boxes, they're all the rage. A KiwiCo subscription makes the perfect holiday gift for every young explorer, engineer, and artist in your life. Empower them to be creative, confident, and fearless in all their endeavors with KiwiCo's innovative projects. Listen, KiwiCo creates super cool hands-on projects for kids to make learning about STEAM fun. You know what STEAM is? Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. STEAM is an acronym that stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Art and math. I it's designed by experts and tested by kids. So there's no need to research or worry about gathering all the supplies. They have everything you need. Seven lines to choose from, all from ages zero to 104. So there's something for every kid on your list. Panda, koala, kiwi, atlas, doodle, tinker, and eureka crates. All available. <laughs> Lots of stuff to choose from. It's all cool. It's all innovative. It's all educational. As a parent... You're super busy and always on the go. This is a perfect opportunity to spend quality time with your kids while they learn something and have fun doing it. Engage them with KiwiCo. This holiday, give the gift of hands-on learning for tomorrow's makers. KiwiCo is a convenient, affordable way to encourage your children to be anything they want to be. There's no commitment. You can cancel at any time. Monthly options start at $16.95 a month and include shipping. Get you some KiwiCo for your kids. Kids. Go to KiwiCo.com slash Heartland. Get your first month free. Every day counts when it comes to making a difference. So don't miss out on this amazing opportunity. Again, go to KiwiCo.com slash Heartland and get your first month free. That's KiwiCo, K-I-W-I-C-O dot com slash Heartland. Booyah! So what, what else is going on for the week? You got a lot of travel coming up, I assume? Pittsburgh. Guys? Yeah, Pittsburgh oh, yeah, this week. The Pitt game? Yep. Yeah, that'll be fun going back to Pittsburgh. Hopefully, you guys gonna hit it. It's supposed to be very cold. Yeah, it's supposed to be it's supposed to be very very cold. Well, that's part of the charm of Pittsburgh, though, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> well, it's tough when you're in uh, like Tampa one week uh, and like yeah, California yeah. the week before, and Texas. you can wear like yeah shorts and t-shirt, and then you got to wear fucking snow pants and boots <laughs> and shit mm-hmm. like that. No, I agree though; it is part of the charm. Yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> going to the bars. I mean, that's that's the only reason I would go to Pittsburgh is go to the bars. I don't know though; it's tough on these trips. Like, you really do, we don't no. go into the bars and getting time one on. That really isn't a part of the equation. Yeah, no. well, you don't have enough time. No, for yeah, there's like you know, I mean, working the whole time. So, mm-hmm. but it, it it'll be a good time. I'm excited to go back. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, you guys can hang for this if you want uh, the movie review. If you're wondering why we didn't do that today. 
just we had this interview. We had some other things coming up. Like we're getting stacked on interviews now, so we're trying to space things out a certain way. So and we're just going to move the movie reviews to YouTube exclusively. So they're only going to be on YouTube. If you want to watch them, please do. But you can only find it on on uh, YouTube. It's just I don't know. We we got a good booker. It looks like YouTube guests are coming like crazy. So fitting in the movie reviews and these interviews is kind of. Don't bulky. we have a big interview coming up this week? We do. So I don't know when it's going to release, but Tuesday we're interviewing the two DEA agents that took down Pablo Escobar. No, nice. excuse me, Javier Pena. And Stephen Murphy, the, the two from, guys from the Narcos. guy from Narcos, yeah, yeah. Yep. that's the pretty fucking guys. cool. Yeah, so we'll be talking to them Tuesday. That should be pretty epic, and that'll either come out a on lot Wednesday of or Monday. Yeah. yeah, I might have to rewatch season one. Just to you should. Oh yeah, that's a great idea. Maybe. Yeah, I gotta watch it for the first time. So. Yeah, me too. You've never <laughs> seen it? No, no I never. Oh, oh, you're in for a treat. You know who Pablo Escobar is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know who uh, Pablo is. Wait, didn't you didn't you once do a segment of Pablo Escobar's trial? Or? Uh, yes. That was not Pablo. That was um, El, El Chapo. Chapo. El Chapo. Either way, it was electric. Oh yeah, that was a uh, that was a good segment we had. There for a little bit. Uh, That'll be awesome. I know it should be pretty cool. Hopefully, hopefully. How old are those guys now? Phone. 70s, late sixties, maybe seventy. Maybe. They know. were young in the show when they yeah. were actually doing it. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to even think when Pablo Escobar went down. Was that in the 80s? I believe so, but I'm not 90s. sure. 90s? 80s, early 90s? Look that up real quick. See. Yep. People who brought down Pablo Escobar. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if they were consultants for the show or if that, Good question that story ask. is like big enough now that they don't even have to have I would it. assume a book's been written about it. And they that have written the, a book. Yeah. yeah. Prize source so, material. Yeah, because wasn't yeah. one of them kidnapped him? No, that no, was in the late, season. that was in the latest season. I think a hit was put on both of them. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. they were attempts oh, yeah. on their lives. So that it's gonna be cool, man. He was cool born story. 1957. So three forty exactly. twenty. Um, sixties. Yeah, sixty. Escobar was no. Uh, Stephen Murphy. Oh okay. So he's in sixties. Sixty four. Yeah. yeah, they're and both retired now. Pena was played by what's his name? Who's very good? Can't remember his name off the top of my head. Yeah, he's crushing it right now. Hmm? The guy that played oh, Javier, I like him a lot. Javier Pena and Narcos is uh, on it. Oh, what's his name so from uh, yep. the Viper from Thrones? Yeah. Yes. You killed her. You raped her. Yep. He's very. You good. raped her. You murdered her. <laughs> Pedro Pascal. Yes. Yeah. Very good. He's very good. Yeah. Uh, Nine point rating for Narcos on the on the internet. I'm so, so. jealous. Ooh. You guys have that left. Like it's good to watch, watch it's good for to the watch. first time. I'm so jealous. It's almost like on the level of having Sopranos left, like season yeah. one of Sopranos. Well, yeah, difference. Sopranos, <laughs> six seasons. That's only well, how many episodes is that? Uh, probably ten, I assume. Yeah, I guess ten. So it's, eh. two seasons of it, Let's see. right? Two, just two. And then two their seasons. third came out on the um, Sinaloa cartel. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Different kind the of Chapas, show, but good. Yeah. So we got that to look forward to. Um, other than that, uh, I think we're gonna get out of here. Enjoy some football. Happy Veterans Day again to everyone who has ever served in the yes. armed forces, the Marines, Thank the you. Navy, the Army, Thank Air you. Force, U.S. Coast Guard. Thank you. All of you, we respect you. You're badasses. Thank you're you. out there doing it every day. You were out there and you did it at one time. Either way, you're a badass. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you, Todd. Thank oh, you, Todd. You're welcome. Thank you, Todd. Thanks, Thanks, Todd. Thank you. We didn't do a whole lot, really, to be honest. Um, yeah, so here's an interview with a paranormal investigator and a psychic medium. That I really enjoyed. Connor really enjoyed it. Bailey really enjoyed it. Hope you enjoy it too. That's the sound I make as soon as I get home in my door to change out of my jeans or work pants oh, and throw on oh. and throw on some raggedy old sweatpants. Nice. Yeah. But and I know all you guys are like me. No more. We what don't do have mean? to waste time anymore thanks to public rec oh, because yeah. these oh, pants are so comfortable. Oh, yeah, you're right. You can wear them in the office, go straight home. You can still wear them while you're lounging on the couch. Sleep in them. Yeah, you're not that scumbag sleeping in jeans or laying nah, around nah, on, in nah, jeans nah. on the couch all day. Nah. Listen, Public Rec's all-day, everyday pants eliminate the gap between style and comfort. Feel the comfort of home even when you're out, and they're great for the office, the bar, anywhere in between. Your new go-to, more stylish than sweats, comfier than jeans, indoor comfort meets outdoor style. They're the first sweats that have waist and inseam sizing. So whether you're short, tall, or somewhere in between, Zeet, they fit perfectly. Whoa. They d the design details like the elastic waistband with the internal drawstring, the two deep front zipper pockets, and the faux Gee. front fly. Oh, yeah. 
a more formal look oh, with yeah. some casual wear. Oh, they had about yeah. nine different colors to choose from, so one for every day of the week, twice on Sunday, and then one extra just for you. Love wow. it. Uh, first, I, I started wearing these around the house. Then I realized I could wear them to work, and I wasn't going to get ridiculed, so I started doing that. Mm-hmm. And then, mm-hmm. you know, you can wear them out to the bar. You can wear them anywhere. Yeah. These things fly in any weather. Public Rec's all-day, everyday pants are the most versatile, stylish, and comfortable pants you'll own. And right now, like they have an exclusive man. offer just for our listeners. Head to publicrec.com slash heartland today to get 10% off your order. Automatically apply to checkout. Nice and easy. That's public rec. Rec spelled R-E-C dot com slash heartland for 10% off. Don't sleep on this rare opportunity to get a discount. Publicrec.com slash heartland. <laughs> So there's a new show on Travel Channel called The Holzer Files, and it's it's where they re they reopen some famous cases from the files of America's first ghost hunter, Hans Holzer. And this show is hosted by paranormal investigator Dave Schrader and psychic medium Cindy Kaza. And as you guys know, we love to dive deep into the world of the paranormal. So we decided to reach out to both these people and find out what's going on with Tulsa Files and get to know each of them and a, get a better understanding of the paranormal in general. Oh, yeah. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Dave Schrader and Cindy Kaza. Yeah! <laughs> Woo! Thank you. Thank hey, you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you guys so much for taking time to call in. Um, Dave, let me start off by having you just tell me quickly uh, what the Holzer Files is about and, and who Hans Holzer is. Well, you know, Hans Holzer, unfortunately, we lost him 10 years ago in 2009, but he really uh, was one of the forerunners in the paranormal field of bringing it out into a public way and kind of marrying science with uh, paranormal investigating. And he had developed the Holzer method, which we still use. Uh, It's, you know, investigating these locations with a good medium. He believed the medium was uh, the key element to the investigation. So we have Cindy Keza as a part of our team, uh, and she is kind of our instrument to the other side. Um, She's really amazing at digging through the layers of history and connecting with the spirits. And you know, you got to give her a lot of credit. She goes in blind on these locations like Hans Holzer uh, would bring his mediums in and do the same thing. Uh, Ethel Meyer, Sybil Leak, he would make sure that they were going to a location they knew nothing about. He would bring them in. Uh, and, you know, in the same instance, we may fly into one state and then drive 200 miles to get to the location in a totally different state. So Cindy has no clue where we're heading off to on every episode. And then we go in and try to understand the history of the location. We go in with the foreknowledge uh, that Hans Holzer has brought into the case 40, 50, 60 years ago. We take his findings and then, uh, and then we bring a medium in Cindy Keza to do her work and open up, try to connect to what's going on and who might still be there. And then try to put this, this historical mystery puzzle back together and see if there's a way that we can help them. So that's, that's the basis of doing this. And uh, we were lucky enough that the Holzer family had allowed uh, a travel channel and our production company to access these files and re-examine them. Incredible. Cindy Kaza, I'm so sorry I pronounced your last name wrong. But to my credit, I watched the video, oh, okay. and evidently that person also pronounced your name <laughs> wrong. So I should I should have uh, <laughs> went two or three deep to to verify that. But Cindy, how, how incredible of an opportunity is this? for you as a medium to to re-enter these investigations that were kind of left unfinished by the the father of american ghost hunting or paranormal investigating it's just it's such an amazing opportunity and i had such an amazing experience because you know when hans holzer was investigating these cases with his mediums they didn't have the technology that we have today and it's kind of a medium's dream to be able to witness, you know, using, you know, the, my ability, so my psychic and mediumistic abilities, married with the modern technology that the paranormal community uses, and to see how the two things match up. Because there are times where we go into these cases, and I'm picking on some, up on something, you know, big time, and then the equipment's going off at the same time. So it's just been really, really special um, to be able to see that happening. And, you know, Hans Holzer's work is is amazing and so it's been just an opportunity all around that i don't know that i ever would have 
you know, had. It, and so I'm honored to, to be a part of it, really. Okay, so here's here's my question. And by the way, we are very, a very open-minded show when it comes to this. We are fans of the paranormal. We actually went on a paranormal investigation one time, like two years ago, three years ago on Halloween. The most, one of the most incredible experiences of my life. Um, so I want to know, like, and just chime in, whoever wants to first. Um, what is the significance of doing what each of you do, respectively, and being alive today where it's almost, uh, it's so widely accepted where maybe I, I'm assuming back in the days of Hans Holzer, this was like you were considered either a crazy person or this was dark science or, you know, in, in your instance, Cindy, if we go back far enough, almost witchcraft, you know, like how incredible is it to, to, for this to be almost a mainstream thing, at least one that has a huge fan base? It's awesome. I mean, it's awesome. And I always say to people that we all have this ability to a degree. I do a lot of live events and I make it a point to make people aware of that because we all are born with an intuition. People are constantly saying, oh, I have to trust my gut. Well, what you're really saying when you say that is I have to trust my psychic ability. So people are waking up to that, especially now a lot of people are waking up to it. So we're in a really, really great time for all of this stuff to be happening. And, you know, I feel that Hans would be excited to, to see all of this coming to fruition. You can see it, you know, I'm sure you can see it. So we're in a really, really great space for this to be unfolding. And it's awesome. Cindy, I'm glad you brought that up because one of my questions was exactly, are there levels to this? Um, because all of us have experienced intuition, uh, me, me including, uh, included. Um, and so is it a matter of the, the gift is given at levels or is it something that anyone can hone as a skill? You know, that's a great question. So I do believe that some people are just naturally way, you know, way more open to having these experiences. Okay. And I always use the reference, you know, we can all play the piano, but not everybody's going to be a concert pianist. So we all have some <laughs> ability and through, you know, understanding and honing that ability, you can enhance your your connection to the other side it doesn't mean that everybody's going to have the same connection though but i think what happens is when people watch hollywood movies and they're seeing things like the sixth sense and i'm not knocking that movie i love it it's a great movie and it gets a lot of things right mm -hmm. but what's happening is people are thinking well i have to see the person standing directly in front of me to be having the experience and that's not correct so it's more of people, you know, needing to be aware of how the communication happens. It's a lot more subtle than what people are expecting based on the movies that they've been watching. So, you know, some people have it more than others. That, that is true. And it can be passed down in families, which is also correct. But we all have an inherent, you know, ability. Okay, so I have this cousin. I'm going to pose a scenario to you. I have a cousin who's recently diagnosed as schizophrenic, okay? And for a while now, he had been trying to relay to several of us like, Hey, I'm seeing people and I I'm hearing voices. And like when, when my mom is sitting on the couch, sometimes I see the same people like sitting next to her, whatever. So I'm not saying this is the case with him, but it's easy to say one's open-minded and it's a different thing to actually be open-minded to the inexplainable. But what's to say a person like my cousin isn't actually seeing someone because they are in touch with people that have passed or something like that instead of just being diagnosed as schizophrenic and there's some kind of chemical imbalance going on in his brain that's causing him to imagine things. Yeah, and that's a really, really great point. And obviously I'm not a doctor and I can't diagnose or sure. anything like that, but there are people that have been thrown into insane asylums that are mediums. But what I think where the line comes, uh, if if you're hearing voices and the voices are telling you to harm other people, kill other people, kill yourself, that's a different scenario. I have never had that happen to me ever in all the years that I've been practicing mediumship. Uh, so, you know, that that's different. But there are people that have been diagnosed with mental illness that are just very, very connected to the other side and they don't understand it. And sometimes when people don't understand what's happening, they don't know how to process the energy and it actually can make them crazy. So there are a lot of different things, you know, that play, play into it. But there definitely is a difference between somebody with paranoid schizophrenia and somebody who's, 
you know, having mediumistic, a mediumistic experience. But I can't say for sure that people who have schizophrenia um, aren't actually feeling some things, right? Because it all comes through validation. So in order right. for, uh, you know, me to even know if my experiences are real, I need to have the validation. I need somebody to say, oh, yeah, that is correct. I can identify it with that. Oh, I can find that in, in historical textbooks. So there are, all, there are a lot of different factors that come into play, honestly. Okay, so it's all in the communication. No. Do you, I'm sorry, Dave. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I, I happened to speak to uh, two gentlemen in the, in the last month, Jerry uh, Marzinski, and Jerry has worked as a counselor in prison systems dealing with schizophrenics. And through his research while working with inmates, he's come to the conclusion that the voices that they hear are not hallucinations, but what he's calling energetic vampires and entities that actually afflict schizophrenics. So there's a guy who's working in the field as a psychotherapist. Um, then there's uh, Dr. Paul Leslie, who's written a book called Shadows in the Sessions. And uh, he talks about the presence of anomalous in psychotherapy. It's his newest book uh, that's out called Shadows in the Sessions. He talks about and examines um, the appearance of, of kind of strange supernatural and paranormal accounts through the history of psychotherapy. Uh, as well as, you know, talking about a lot of firsthand modern-day accounts from therapists who have experienced anomalous activity in their therapy sessions. Absolutely. So we can't throw the baby out with the bathwater and just say, oh, they're schizophrenic, they're nuts, they're hearing voices. There may be something much more to it, because if you're able to corroborate, I mean, it's one thing to have the voices telling you innocuous, big-picture things, but then when you have Cindy Keza who comes in and says, Dave, uh, there's a man here. He feels like a grandfather. His name is Cliff, and he's got an old blue pickup with a pink hood, and he used to take you fishing, and you were embarrassed by that pink hood. That's, I mean, you can't get more specific than that. That isn't just uh, the voices are saying to kill, you know, which when when some of these people are hearing the voices and they're giving them specific detailed information, which some of these psychotherapists have been talking about, they're in the therapy session, and suddenly like the exorcist, the voice starts telling them personal things about their lives and they're dead on. It's time to start re-examining what we consider to be mental health issues. Absolutely. And I can't get well, enough I of it. I, and Cindy, I was going to say quickly, um, p part of this is because you were fortunate enough to probably come up in an environment where you were allowed to embrace it and be curious and find out what was going on and then, and then get training. You actually went and got training to to be able to understand and utilize your gift where, you know, I imagine there's just countless cases of others. I mean, we've kind of already covered it that, that were just immediately just called crazy and then institutionalized or outcasts because they were scared to embrace that or find out what was going on it was tried to hide it. Absolutely. And you know, for me, the first experience I remember having was when I was 10 years old, I saw a girl that had died uh, standing directly next to my bed, and it was horrifying. And, and it really, honestly, it took me um, years to really embrace this because I was afraid of it. I, I'm an empath, so I can also feel everybody else's emotions around me, including my own, which for a child or anybody is very confusing. Uh, you know, I would have lucid dreams a lot as a child. I knew when things were going to happen before they did. But honestly, it wasn't until 19 or 20 years old that I met my first mentor who started talking to me about my experiences. And then I started doing automatic writing uh, in my mid-20s. And then I said, you know what, I got to figure this out. And, and I was very lucky to, and you're right, I was very lucky that I was able to find a mentor. And then I had somebody say, you need to go to this place called the Arthur Finley College in England. And it's really like Harry Potter school. It's a fascinating place. But, but I am one of the fortunate ones because for people who don't understand their abilities, it's very confusing. And also a lot of people with these abil abilities wind up self-medicating and then it becomes sort of a dual diagnosis thing. So, right. I mean, yeah, no, it's exactly else, what happened with my cousins. Why I raised the question. And again, I don't know what's going on with him, but he chose to self-medicate for a long time. And then that became the blame for seeing things mm -hmm. and hearing things, right. you know what I mean? So it's just such a confusing yeah. issue all around. Um, I, all right, I want to bounce around a little bit, so I'm, I just want to keep you both equally involved. I, you brought up 
tools and and technic and technology that were used in these investigations earlier, Cindy. So, Dave, why don't you talk about because uh, when we won our paranormal investigation. We use the EMF detector, the electromagnetic field oh, detector. Yeah. I, I was a big fan of that. I don't know if it works or not. Why don't you tell me what new tools are available now that, that you use that you think actually are the best at indicating uh, a presence within a location? You know, that's that's hard to say. Some, some tools are extremely effective in some locations, and then you use those same tools at the next location, and they get nothing. But something else picks up on it. You know, I... We like the basics, uh, audio recorders, video cameras, photography. That's the basics. Then we slowly add in things like uh, melmeters or the uh, obelisk, the spirit box, the SLS cameras, and those start giving us different ways to examine these claims. But we've had tools where, you know, you, we don't always show them. We may try 10 tools on an investigation but we only show the ones that are getting results. So we put the, the rest away. Then the next episode, you may see new, new tools that are getting responses. And well, what happened to the other tools? Well, they didn't work on this episode. Nothing was coming through, but these tools are effective. And sometimes going back to the original methods and, you know, the old talcum powder on the floor and looking for, uh, you know, breezes and finding different things that, that could show you, you know, kind of the, the, um, 1800s, early 1900s paranormalist movement of magnets and, and compasses and things like that. They're just as dramatic to see affected. And you put down powder on the floor and suddenly there's footprints that appear. That's pretty compelling evidence. Um, you know, and that's nothing that we did in the first season, but it, you know, it's things that going forward, if, if we get picked up for another season, I'd love to try to start, you know, instigating some of the older ways with the newer technology and see if we start seeing more effective ways than what they used to do. Are we maybe becoming too enamored with the new ways that we're throwing the old ways out the door, but that's what was very successful for investigators for many years. Absolutely. And I think the reason why people are, are more accepting of paranormal investigations and why it has such a huge following now and a fan base is People like an investigation, period. They always liked cop stuff. I, I'm a former detective. I like cop stuff. I like investigating. And it's just like criminal investigations. There is a story to be told, and your job is simply to go in there and find out what happened so you can tell somebody else what happened, right? So in doing so, Cindy, you particularly, I, I, I had a little bit of dealing with this when I was a criminal investigator, but psychic and psychic mediums have been used for as far back as we probably can remember in criminal investigations not saying that it's it's widely accepted as not usable in court necessarily any of those things but they have helped solve cases and that point is indisputable mm -hmm. have you yeah and, they, and and i think a lot of Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to ask if you've had, if you've been utilized in that fashion by law enforcement or people that uh, your peers have had experience with that. Uh, so I, I've done a little bit of that. Um, it's not something that I do often, and I, but I do have a couple of good friends who that's what they do all the time. I mean, they work directly with the FBI. They work with the police department. They, they you know, and so it, they are utilized often. And it's true, you know, a lot of times the the Detectives won't talk about that, yes. but it can be very beneficial. Um, you know, the confusing part sometimes is is because I'm a psychic and a medium, and you know, most uh, most of the friends that I have that do work with the police are both as well. So a psychic picks up on past, present, and future. A medium communicates with people on the other side. Mm -hmm. So there's a difference between the two. All mediums are psychic. Not all psychics have the same level of mediumistic ability. So really what it boils down to is if you already know the person has passed away, right? If there's that, we know this person is dead. We're trying to figure out what happened. Then you're tapping in. You can go to the spirit world and connect to the spirit. If you're not sure what, if the person is dead, then you most likely would tap into the psychic ability. So, you know, you really have to know in that situation what you're working with, which aspect to utilize. And there's always that fine line of being careful because even as a psychic, if you're working strictly in a psychic sense, you can see a person clearly. You can get their name. You can see where they live. You can see all this stuff and say, oh, they're on the other side when they're still alive, right? So sure. it's kind of this delicate dance you have to do. Can you turn it on and off, Cindy? Or is it you're just always an active antenna for this? 
Uh, I can turn it on and off. Or I, okay. I say turn it way down and turn it way up because I'm always a little bit more sensitive, I think, you know, just because I, I work in this field constantly. But I do have control over it, thank God, because life would be pretty hard if I had no control. I would be walking around ungrounded all the time, which is not a healthy place to, to live. You know? Yeah, I would think it would be hard to function yeah. normally uh, with all that going on all the time. So that's good to hear. Uh, Dave, you... Um you, you host a couple of radio shows, I think. Are there, those are still going on? Yeah. Darkness Radio and Midnight in the Desert? Yeah, Midnight in the Desert is Monday through Friday nights uh, from 9 to midnight Pacific time. It's midnight till 3 a.m. Eastern time. And uh, you can find info at midnightinthedesert.com. So we're three-hour anomalous talk radio. And then every Saturday and Sunday I do Beyond the Darkness, uh, Darkness Radio. And uh, we're part of the Podcast One Nation over there. Um, so, yeah, I, I still do that. We're 13 years in on doing uh, Darkness Radio, and I, I'm almost two years in on Midnight in the Desert. So I've definitely steeped my life in the supernatural. <laughs> oh, yeah, so you've been, uh, you've been in that world for a very long time, making a living in that world for a very long time. You have a family, I assume? Mm-hmm. I do, a very big family. Between my wife and I, we have 11 kids. Okay, wow. so how does the family feel about your chosen vocation? Like your kids at school, are they, are they, is this the most awesome thing dad could ever do? Are you like Batman to them? Or, or, or are they like, oh, this is kind of weird, dad. You know, I don't I'm, know. The other kids are unsure about it. I'm, I'm more like, I'm more like fat man to them. I think. <laughs> uh, they, they, you know, they enjoy what I do. So a few of them are more interested than others. I've never pushed it on them. I don't really talk about it. They'll watch the TV show, The Holes Are Files, with us now on Thursday nights uh-huh. because they want to see what we're up against. But then there's, you know, we have a, a nice little table discussion after the show to talk about what we experienced and what we saw. And, um, you know, so that's always been a big part of it. My kids have appeared throughout the years on my radio show. I did an episode, I think, two years ago where um, my daughters actually kind of cross examined me on an interview for uh, Beyond the Darkness. And it was great because we all got to talk openly about what we have experienced together and their their interest in what I know. So it's it's always been a nice little uh, give and take, but I've had a very supportive, loving family throughout all of it. And, you know, when the show came around, I said, hey, dad's going to be on the road a lot. Is that okay? They were like, sure, dad, this is your passion. Do it. We love you. Do it. And if uh, we get picked up for a second season, I'll be sitting down and having that second uh, conversation with them and make sure that everybody's on board. Um, but, you know, to date, every one of them has been very uh, supportive of, of what I do, and they're fascinated by uh, this kind of work. Because who, who doesn't want to know what's going on in the world around us? And they'll talk to their friends at school, and their schools, you know, their kids will tell them, hey, you know, this has been happening at my house, or the, can your dad come investigate over here? So oh, you know, you know that day when uh, that day at school when your age. kids bring in their their dad or mom comes in and tells what their job is. You're like the coolest dad every time. You have the coolest job of all the dads. I, well, there. I got asked uh, to one of those, and the they had like ten different dads that came in that day, and you could sign up to go in and listen to. Dad, the podiatrist, dad, the dentist, dad, the ghost hunter, dad, the, uh, <laughs> the accountant, dad, the cop. Yeah, right. And I felt really bad because my room was over. They had to open the walls between rooms so that they could fit everybody into my room. And eventually the other dads just wandered into my room because nobody was in there. Uh, and the teachers all said that was one of the best, best presentations we've ever heard. We loved it. You really catered to the kids without scaring them. And, you know, as, as fascinating as that is, we can never have you come back for a parent day again because it's devastating to every other parent <laughs> that uh, has a, a, yeah. a regular job. So I agreed. And, and I've been back to uh, schools to talk about uh, the stuff, but on a like they bring me in solo. I just did. That it was really cool. I got to go back to my old high school and do a big talk for the students and staff. Um, so that's that, that's kind of neat. Yeah, but, yeah cool. they, I, I'm not allowed back at parent parent uh, day anymore because. It's just not fair to the attention of yeah. a, of it, the dads that have very it, important jobs. Insurance salesman dad's really pissed off right now. <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah, he's like, yeah, you put me, I got to follow ghost hunter ghost dad. Hunter, come, come on, on. paranormal investigator dad. That's right. Um, so how do you beat a guy named darkness day of when you're pod- podiatrist <laughs> Pete, you know, it just doesn't work. <laughs> exactly. Um, Cindy, you do, you do live shows. You, you, you tour the country. I saw so you, you, 
perform in a lot of venues that I've performed in, doing stand-up comedy, a lot of comedy clubs, other types of oh. intimate venues. This live show's got to be incredible. I would love, would love to check this out. So tell, tell me what goes on in one of your live shows. Yeah, please come anytime. And I do. It's, it, it is funny. I do work in comedy clubs, and people are kind of confused. They're like, what is going on here? But <laughs> I love the venues. I just use the venues, you know? And uh-huh. um, so people can come out and have some drinks and have some food. And I tour. I live out of a suitcase. I'm, I'm constantly on the road. But yeah, so I, I work, I get on stage, and I connect to the other side, and I bring through people's loved ones that have passed away, family and friends, and that's what I do. I have a 90-minute event, and I you know get to as many people as I can in the 90 minutes, and and that's how it, how it goes. But I love working in comedy clubs. So yeah, and when you Google me, it says, Com- comedian Cindy Kays. I'm like, uh-oh, how do I change that? <laughs> you know? So I've been calling myself, I'm like, I'm a comedian. I'm just going to take comedian. There you go. Nice. In, you know? Yeah. It's- Add some humor yeah. to it. Hey, uh, I, I have Connor here with me uh, today, so he, he has some questions for each of you, respectively, if that's okay. Sure. sure. Yeah, Cindy, you just mentioned kind of the spirit world in general. Um, in, in in your shows, you connect to specific people. Is the spirit world everywhere? Do the spirits follow their um, relatives, or is there specific spots like, you know, uh, a haunted house in that kind of aspect. Is that more where the spirits flock to? Well, that's a really great question. And it's it's actually a a deep question because I believe the spirit world is around us all the time. It's everywhere. It's all encompassing. And so, you know, on the other side, there's no time or space, but to explain the spirit world and, and how I experience it, I have to use time and space in this dimension. Otherwise people would not understand what the heck I'm talking about. So I feel it's a multi-layered space on the other side, and I feel depending on, you know, what your soul went through in this dimension over there, it it could it goes to a layer uh, or level that it has to go to to extreme healing. And when you walk into haunt, haunted houses or places with activity, uh, you know, it, there are spirits that like to stay very close to the layer of earth, and, and it's, they're impressing upon this earth, which a lot of people call trap spirits, or they can't move on. They're just really connected and, and need the experience like they're still here. And so they will be in a house that they wanted to stay in, or they, they just can't, you know, become unattached from it. So it, it's, gosh, it's, it's not that easy to explain, because even if I were in another state, right, I could be in Texas and connect into the house with a spirit that's in California and connect in that way. So it's oh, wow. like if you're tapping into this giant computer brain where it all exists at the same time. Does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's absolutely mind boggling, first of all. But also, you kind of mentioned um, moving on, like the spirits move on in, in quotes. What, what do you mean by that uh, specifically? So moving on to me would mean a spirit on the other side would be moving to the next layer or level of their soul progression on the other side. So what's happening is when you go into a location or we're communicating with a spirit, right? And that spirit is really struggling. They don't want to leave. They're like, I'm not leaving this house. This is my house. I want to stay here. As a medium or a paranormal investigator, you can communicate with the spirit and explain to them, look, you have to go. It's your time to go. It's time to move on. And they don't always do that. You can't force them to. They, you know, there has to be a willingness. So even places that we'll go into now, in, in Hans's cases, where he couldn't move the spirit on, we still sometimes can't do that. So it's not, it's not a matter of us just going in and say, get out of here, you have to leave now. We're hoping that they'll leave, but it's not guaranteed because the soul has to be willing to move to the next layer. So that's what I feel it means moving on. That's what it is. People that don't believe in this in general, obviously they just assume, I guess, that the, the light goes out and that's it. I mean, you have to, like, I have seen people die in front of me, and there is something inexplainable, so powerful in seeing, like, you. there's a life force there. The body looks different when the life force is in the vessel. Mm-hmm. As, immediately, as soon as it leaves, mm-hmm. The body looks fake. It looks like a Hollywood mm-hmm. prop to me. And to see that, there's if anyone ever sees that, there's no way you could doubt that there was a soul or life force there and that it's moved somewhere. Does that, does that make sense mm-hmm. at all? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because the soul, we do have souls. 
the body is just, you know, it's a, it's a suit for the soul in this lifetime. So when the soul leaves the body, it's going to another space. And, and that's, a, that's what it is. So you really are seeing the life force leaving the body, which is just the shell for the soul in this dimension. Now, are you only communicating with ones that um, have not moved on to wherever heaven, wh- wherever that layer. is, you know, the, according to your faith, that, that ultimate destination? Are you only communicating with ones that are stuck here? Or can you communicate with those that have made it to the final destination? Well, I mean, what is the final destination? And that's the question, right? Because it's a multi-layered space on the other side where the soul is still healing. So we're communicating, well, I believe I'm communicating with souls in many different layers on the other side. And that's what happens in these locations sometimes as you walk in and you can feel the different time layers. And some of the souls in these time layers, they're not even aware of one another. They'll be you know, in the same, around the same location, but they don't meet or they don't see each other. And that's very fascinating because what it's showing us is that there are different spaces where the souls exist on the other side, right? So it's it's really, I mean, you could talk about this topic for hours and hours because there's so much to it. Absolutely. Dave, um, Connor brought up earlier exorcisms to me. Mm, We have talked about it before on this show. We tried to get an actual exorcist from the archdiocese here in the Annapolis area to come on. He went, I understand. I, yeah. Oh, yo, you're a comedian. You want to talk to me about exorcism? I get it. It's, it's probably a good idea to generally say no. We would have had a blast and I think you would have enjoyed it, but it's neither here nor there. But exorcisms, Dave, have you been, privy to one before have you ever been at the site of an actual exorcism or is it so closed off because it's uh, the catholic church's responsibility well you know we we did an episode recently called the devil in texas okay. and it was a case that uh, the family reached out to hans holzer hans went out to take a look and um met with the family and you know suggested i think this place is just spoiled i think this 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 house is bad and you should move and they did. They moved, and things settled down for a short time, and they kind of lost touch. But then all hell literally broke loose again in this poor guy's life. And we kind of follow up with the family to see what happened. And, and the, you know, there was a tragic ending to that story, and it always haunted Hans Holzer. And we had a family reach out to me through my radio show, uh, Darkness Radio, and this woman felt she was under demonic attack. So we had this very similar storyline and we ended up going to look into a contemporary modern day story. And it's, you know, first of all, it's kind of a a scary thing to do because, you know, if there's demons there, that's, there's something different between a demonic realm and a ghost. And, you know, especially I was, I was very concerned for Cindy. I know she's very protected and, and does everything she needs to, to be grounded. But I, you know, I just am so fearful when you go into a, a place where there's demonic claims how can that affect all of us shane myself and and most importantly cindy and we went in and and encountered the story and kind of looked it over and realized that there were different aspects to um to the story and you know uh, the demonic realm certainly was making this presence known but it was more about the individual and the, the demons she was fighting within herself and kind of PK psychokinetic um, activity. So I've seen people I believe are dealing with dark forces and, and may be oppressed. Um, I don't believe they're in full possession mode. Uh, and I'm smart enough to know if I get uh, contact and help, which I get all the time, please, Dave, this is going on. I put them in touch with somebody I know and trust, uh, you know, uh, Reverend Bill Bean, who we featured on that episode, or one of the other uh, archbishops that I've worked with. And I just don't put myself in that position, and they'll be the first to tell you, don't do it. Uh, it the, being a demonologist in the paranormal field is not the X games of paranormal investigating. Everybody thinks, oh, yeah, I'm a big, bad demonologist. How? Well, I read a bunch of books. You're not a demonologist. If you don't have a true calling in your life, you're just endangering yourself, and you're endangering others. So I'm very cautious with who I ask to help us, and they will be the first to tell me, don't investigate this. Let me handle it from here. I'll talk to the family. If this truly is an infestation, the last thing you need is to bring it home to your family. Absolutely. So, okay. So that's all right. Kind of, there, yeah, there's the two right. different worlds. So uh, I guess in police terms, like in, in your world, 
dealing with what you're used to dealing with 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 paranormal like normal activity and demons that's like the difference between dealing with a mugger and isis like it's a whole new ball game right how do you separate that especially right. cindy have you ever walked into that before and you were like oh my antenna should not have been on right now because this is something that i don't want to deal with you know luckily i haven't been put in that position yet. I've been into some, you know, some places that were pretty scary. I mean, you know, there's a place called Bobby Mackey's. That place, that place didn't make me feel very comfortable. I probably wouldn't go in there again. But I haven't walked in and seen somebody under full possession yet. And if that were to happen, I honestly, uh, I don't really know at this point what I would do because that's I'm not a demonologist. I'm not, you know, an exorcist. That's not what I do. Yeah, leave so, it to the exorcists. They are the Navy to... SEALs of this stuff. Like, they are they are the elite. They are the special forces. I totally yeah. agree. Right. I'm glad you guys are on board, because that was going to be my question. You just immediately, like, let's call in the Navy SEALs. Well, let's and call in Father is, so-and-so. They come out, and if they come out and they start talking about what they do and what they look for, unfortunately, that starts planting seeds. It's like me suddenly, you guys come over to my house, and I go, oh, yeah, you know, last week we had to treat my daughter for lice. You two are going to start scratching your heads. Right. It's just the natural effect. You start thinking about it. You're like, ah, oh, lice. Why didn't you tell me that before I got here? Right. If a, if a, de- a demonologist or an exorcist comes on the air with you and starts telling you the things to watch out for, the things that uh, suddenly everybody starts seeing a, a demon in every uh, cabinet. And we've come across dark forces. It doesn't mean it's demonic. Sometimes it's just a very pissed off spirit, which we ran into at the Whaley House in right. San Diego on, on the Holzer Files. You know, it'd be real easy to label it a demon, but let's call it what it was. It was a pissed off ghost that didn't like that uh, Dave, Cindy, and Shane dragged it out of the darkness where it's been hiding for 100 years, and we gave it a name. And it, just... uh, it threw me on the ground. I mean, it knocked me on my ass shortly after Cindy warned us it doesn't like you and it's going to screw with you. It's going to try to hurt you. It's going to try to drop you to your knees or hurt your knees. And, you know, 10 minutes later, I'm, I'm laying on the ground trying to figure out what the hell just happened to me. I watched so, a video on that. That was we, we, very powerful, like to actually be touched and moved yes. physically from one point A to point B to on your ass. It's got to be a scary situation. And I assume it's just because there's good people, you know, in, in the living world, there's good people and there's bad people. I assume that doesn't change. Once you cross over to the other side, so can you tell right away, Cindy, if you're dealing I, with uh, somebody who's got mal intentions or someone who's just trying to communicate benevolently? Benevolently? Oh, yeah, it feel, it, you can really feel it. You can feel the difference in the energy. And you can also, you know, because I can hear them, when, what they're saying to me, you can feel the energy behind their voice and what they're saying and how their words are coming out. So, absolutely. And like I was saying before, the multi layered space on the other side, those spirits that are angry and aggressive they're the ones that are very very close connected almost locked almost locked to this dimension so that's that's where that force is coming in and they're the ones that are difficult to get rid of because you know you can yell at them all day long or tell them to leave but there still has to be the willingness on the part of the spirit to actually understand that there's something better for them and their, their soul can move beyond that on the other side this is awesome. I mean, I can't thank you guys for hanging out enough. But Connor has one more question. We're going to end on this one because um, we're, we're a big TV movie show. Big time. Big Outside time. of the paranormal and the world of the weird that we like to dive into, our other passion are movies and television. So he has, he has a great question for each of you. Yeah. Um, we see paranormal activity franchises and, you know, The Conjuring as these incredible, scary movies. But is there any uh, accurate depictions of any specific films that you guys have seen maybe um, that actually shows the process and the – kind of wear and tear of the entire spirit world that you guys have seen that uh, you could kind of tell us about? Because I'm going to guess The Haunting. Right away, that's my yeah. guess. I'm going to guess The Haunting. Oh, The Conjuring. I'm sorry, The Conjuring. The Conjuring, yeah, sorry, yeah. The I Conjuring. got it mixed up. The Conjuring is great. The okay. Conjuring is a good one. And, and, you know, it's great. And The Sixth Sense, I've got to tell you, um, every time I watch it, I'm like, man, they really, uh, he, he really got a lot of stuff right in that. Uh, so I, I'd say those two movies are pr- a pretty good representation. Dave, what do you say? Uh, you know, here's the, the sad and weird thing. The Conjuring uh, is a great story. It's truly one of the, I think, one of the best horror movies of the last 15, 20 years because Agreed, it's a good psychological sure. movie. 
and it gets it right, but it gets the complete story wrong. Very little of what you see in the movie is what happened to the family, which is strange to me because their actual story is more frightening and more compelling than what you saw on the movie. So I don't understand why Hollywood will buy the rights. And then basically what, what they're saying is, hey, we want to buy your radio show and the rights to your radio show, and then we're going to turn it into a cooking show on the movie screen. And you're like, well, why? You bought our right to who we are. Yeah. yeah. You guys are great characters, but we think you'd be more believable as cooking show hosts. And you're like, what the hell? Are, what planet are you on? Cooking shows so do they, very well. They got it right. I mean, fu- funny enough, they got it right with the stories and how it's kind of a slow burn in some of these paranormal encounters, and it can amp up quickly but they didn't get the actual story right. So that's, uh, that's one concept. And, you know, I, I, I think a lot of horror movies, a lot of scary movies get parts of it very right. You know, The Exorcist, from what I hear, it got a lot of it right. Of course, not the over-the-top head-spinning, uh, right. you know, crab crawling down the stairs. But with that said, I've talked to some exorcists that have seen full physical manipulation where – you know, their hands will uh, and arms will almost break in places as they're shifting and changing. Wow. The eyes will go black. The voices will change. So there are aspects of that that, that get it right as well. Um, but, you know, of course, Hollywood has to blow it up because it's it, truthfully, it's more entertaining. Uh, you know, it, it is what it is. It's, sure. You know, kind of like, well, why do you guys always hunt ghost hunt in the dark? Well, because let's face it, it's creepier in the dark. Uh, on TV, it gives a better look. If you just saw Cindy, Shane, and I walking around in a lit up room, no matter what kind of activity takes place, it's just not nearly as creepy. True. But we also investigate at night because it's a lot quieter sure. and there's less distractions. The dogs aren't barking outside. The guy's not mowing his lawn. There isn't the truck beeping up to empty your garbage can. So we've got less distraction from what we're doing. And it's easier to get locations at, you know, 11 o'clock at night till five in the morning than it is to get it from noon till six o'clock at night. And, you know, get out of there in time for the early bird dinner. So sure, it's just know, a Hollywood thing. Trying I mean, to get it right, you've yeah. got to sometimes sacrifice for storytelling. It's a ho- yeah, it's a Hollywood thing. I mean, it's all about the, the ninety minutes of entertainment. Same way with cop movies. Nobody wants to watch five minutes of action and then then eighty five minutes of paperwork. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which is more realistic, but not as entertaining. Right. It's the same as in your world. But I will tell you what, you two are very entertaining. Mm-hmm. I've could I could have talked for hours. I know you've Thank got you. other people to talk to and other things to work on. So I'm going to let you get out of here. I just want to remind people that the Holzer Files, I believe, does it premiere? Actually, we're recording on Thursday. So is it premiere tonight? Yes. Every, yeah. with okay. the, the Holzer Files is every Thursday on the Travel Channel. Um, and uh, tonight's episode, we're going to the USS Constellation in Baltimore. Uh, piecing together the haunted history of this historic ship. Next week, we're going out to Lambert Castle, and that airs on November uh, 14th. It's 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Central Time. You can check your local listings around the nation and around the world for for times on, in your area. But it's a new episode every Thursday night. And we're what Cindy and I love about this is it's not just your standard ghost story. We're finding amazing pieces of histories, mysteries, and we've run up against everything from poltergeist activity to possible demonic activity to reincarnation and so on and so forth. I mean, there's uh, really fascinating layers to every one of these stories that I, I'm proud to say that, you know, we're part of a program that's unlike anything else out there right now. You guys have the coolest jobs in the world, coolest jobs in the world. Make sure you check that out on travel channel. Make sure that uh, you catch Dave Schrader's radio show, uh, Darkness Radio or Midnight in the Desert, if they're on a station near you. You can also Google him and look up other ways to consume what Dave uh, puts out. And then the same with Cindy. Go see this live show. Watch her on Travel Channel. Watch, watch the other stuff she puts out video-wise. But go see a live show. There's nothing better than live entertainment. I, this show is going to be incredible. It's going to be at a venue somewhere within a reasonable driving distance of you. So, Cindy, how do they find that? What's your website? Yeah, my website is mediumcindykeza.com, and you can find my dates also on Facebook, Medium Cindy Keza. Everything's current. So, yeah, come out and see it. Keza's K-Z-A. Make sure you go to her website, catch a show near you, check out anything else that she puts out. You both are incredible. I thank you so much for taking time out to talk to us for as long as you did, and uh, hopefully we get to talk again sometime. 
Yeah, it's been Please. a great, great time talking to you guys. Thank you so much. Okay, take care. Thank you.